the question is what happens to, in the grave? When a person dies, uh, actually nobody knows when he's going to die. So the angel of death can come to him anytime. Although they say that a person, he kind of senses that today is the day he's going to die and he gets signs and he might even, you know, say farewell to people that he loves and uh, he will sense, like, you know, the soul kind of senses that the angel of death is, is coming. Um, so there are people who, like, I've heard stories of people, like, um, who would do certain things before they die. Uh, I know one one person, one of my cousins, although he was young, he he was he died. Um, he fell into like some place. Uh, there was a hole in the ground. Some builders were building, which is a bit of a carelessness. But during that whole day, the mother was saying that he didn't want to leave me. He was always next to me. But then he went out, and then uh, she told the maid to go look for him. And then she couldn't she couldn't find him. But he fell into a place where they were digging. And she was saying the whole day he was he was he was not leaving my presence. So he kind of sent something. And as people also, like before they die, they say certain things to their relatives, and and it could be the other around as well. Even your a person's soul might kind of sense that you know it might be the last time you see each other. But anyway, as Muslims, you always think that it might be the last time you see each other, and uh, especially when you're traveling, and you know you always greet each other, you make the af for each other. So. The person is uh, like, uh, there could be this kind of uh, any signs for the person, especially for good people. Allah gives them signs so they are able to die in a good situation or they're able to, um, like even Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a believer should always have his will written. So that's uh, looking at death. Now you see a lot of pictures and videos of people who died when they were making sujood, people who died when doing doing this. So it's the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to end your life. It shows that Allah wants khair for you as well. So if you die praying salah or if you die on a, in a good situation, on good terms with your relatives and your family, then that's good. And with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a person dies, his soul leaves his body. And the soul leaves the body, he leaves it through the mouth. That's why you see someone, uh, people open their, their mouths and uh, also they they actually follow the eyes uh, it's like they're following the the soul leave the body as well so when the soul soul leaves the body it goes to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then uh it, it is sent back so if it's a good soul when it's taken up into the skies all the angels will smell it and they will say what a beautiful soul who is this person and they will be praising it and as for the one who is bad, his soul will have a stench and then he'll be thrown down. So the body is like the soul is sitting next to the body and it's not returned to the body because it's waiting to be buried. So the believer would be saying, take me to you know, my grave and take me to Allah and take me to the Jannah. He's happy, he wants to go. But the kafir, or the, the bad person will be afraid. So when a person... Uh, even like we said, when the person dies, he can still hear the relatives. He can still hear what the doctors are saying. Even and he, and he's, he's, he, he, he can hear and see that he can hear what's happening, even when he's put into his grave as well. So when he's taken to his grave, then we know two angels will come and ask this person questions. Al-Munkar wa nakir Okay? So according to how that person was, we know the person who used to pray his salah, the person who used to give charity, the person who's obedient to his parents, like he would, his grave will become something else. So it will become wide, it will become, uh, yeah, and he, he will have the garden of paradise, a window open for him, he'll get the fragrance of paradise coming into his grave. As for the person who is who is evil and sinful, or a disbeliever, his grave will become really tight and it will be a small pit or hellfire. So that just shows you the difference. So the reality we see is not what it is in, in, uh, you know, in, the, in the other world. So when, when you look at a grave, all you just see is sand, you see dust, you see rubble, you see, you see a ground like you see. But when, when Muhammad Sallallahu for example, when he was taken to when he was at the grave you could hear screams 
and you can hear people being punished. So it's two different. It's different. It's a different uh, world that we can't see. But when the person dies, he steps into this world. He sees the angels. He sees the angel of death. He speaks to Allah. He basically. Uh, so there's no coming back. So the more you believe in this, the more you prepare for us. So the person goes into his grave. And the angels ask him the three questions you guys already know. Who is your Lord? So if the person answers these questions correctly, then he will uh, he will be told, you know, you have done well. And then he would have all these blessings put in front of him as well. Although he would not need to eat and drink, but he will have a companion. He will be waiting for Jannah to come and he will be waiting for, he will want it to come quickly. The day of judgment to come quickly, and he will want to enter Jannah. And uh, he would have Quran as his companion if he used to read Quran. Although the hadith says actually it will be his good deeds, it will be his companion, his good deeds. Okay. So as the hadith says, when you are taken to your grave, two things will come back. Three will go with you. Two will come back, and one will remain. So your family and your money will come back. Your money will be distributed between the people. Your uh, your family also, sooner or later, they will forget about you. Uh, maybe they would remember you once in a while, or they will come to your grave once in a while, or if, if, it's, if it's a parent, you should be making dua for them. But in reality, you're not remembered like when you're, when you're there every day. So the person then, he should be thinking about his good deeds and how to work for his good deeds, because this is what will give him good companionship. This will what will be his uh, his results on the day of judgment that will help him get to Jannah. It's not your GCSEs, not your A levels, not your degree, not your job, not your uh, career. That's all secondary. What is going to help you on the day of judgment is uh, in your grave is your deeds. So uh, that's what the hadith says. As the for the not for the disbeliever or the munafiq, I think you guys already know this is a reminder. Um, when he answers these questions incorrectly, he doesn't know. He says, ha ha, I heard people say, and he says that he would be hit on the head with a hammer and everything would hear his scream except the human beings and the jinn, even the animals would hear it. And he will be in the grave, and his ribs will cross each other and intertwine. He will be locked in this place, which is uh, the worst prison you can ever imagine. Um, it will be a hellfire before the real hellfire for him. So at the end of the day, we are only preparing for that really. Life is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُ That this world, if you compare it to the next life, and what's waiting for us, it's like play. It's like we're playing games. Like going to work is like play. You might take it as serious. You might see it being serious. You might see being really important, but it's considered as play in comparison to what's waiting for us. We're like children playing with toys. That's what we look, we're like when you compare what's waiting for us. Okay? It's a play, a play and amusements. But the next life is uh, a life where you will remain. Uh, and also, and, and, and many ayats. فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَاسُ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ The dunya is a short enjoyment that is deceptive. We forget how long the world is. The world for us is 70, 80 years. Okay? Most of that we are sleeping. Most of that we are working, studying. We only have maybe less than 20 years of our life where we can actually fully worship Allah. If you add all the time you worship Allah, it will not even, it will not even be equivalent to, I don't even think, five years. If you add up all your salahs, you pray every single every single day, and all the Ramadans that you fasted, okay, or the Hajj you did, the if you add all of that together, I think it wouldn't even be more than it wouldn't even be more than five years. I haven't done any calculation, but when you take away, they say you end up sleeping for that many hours. I don't know how many hours. You sleep a quarter of a day, of the twenty-four hours. The one quarter, one yeah, almost you sleep like one third of the twenty-four hours. 
Yeah, the 24 hours we're sleeping, I mean, one third. Another, uh, another five hours, you, eight hours, you can say. People are at work, people are at school, we're going to uni, preparing for and coming back. So half of the day is already gone. OK, and then you only have these couple of salas. But Allah's multiplied it for us so we can get re rewarded. So really, um, we should be preparing for this, the grave. It looks easy, but it's not, it's not easy because there's no cheating. You would answer according to what you practiced. Not what you memorized, not the Quran you memorized, not the hadith you memorized, not how many lessons you've taken in Islamic studies, but how many of what you've learned you practiced. How many of the things you're told that they were haram you stayed away from? And that's the reality. It's easy to know and to learn to memorize, but it's hard to practice. And Allah, it became like a little reminder. But anyway, 